What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Hot Sauce. This is Angel Planel, a registered dietitian nutritionist in Seattle, Washington. I just cracked 100 subscribers, and the goal is to make it to 250. So do me a solid and like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get right into it. Today, we are going to feature Deneen Rogers, a registered dietitian nutritionist that resides in Atlanta, Georgia. All right, well, welcome back to the Hot Sauce. Today, we have Deneen Rogers, a good friend of mine that I've met through my years of volunteering at the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. I'm going to go ahead. We're going to put her in the hot seat here. <laughs> and now she's got the main screen. So why don't you go ahead, introduce yourself, and tell us about your journey into the profession. The floor is yours. Go. All right. Thank you, Angel. Um, I'm, I'm Deneen Rogers. I'm, again, also a registered licensed dietitian. Um, I'm originally from New York, but um, now I live in Douglasville, Georgia, where I work full time as um, with Anthem Flucaris Blue Shield um, as a telemedicine dietitian or nutritionist, they call, it, they call it nutritional consultant. And I also do my um, private practice, which is integrated functional medicine called Living Healthy. Um, and also I am doing another business venture, which is uh, my skincare. Um, it's, it's called Living Healthy Skincare. Um, and it also deals with integrated functional medicine, showing about nutrition and skin um, and how they affect um, definitely work together. So, um, but um, very glad to be here and very happy to be here. Well, thank you for coming. So why don't you start us off with what exactly got you inspired to get into the profession? What would you say? What well, well, I started um, way back when I was uh, a youngster. <laughs> um, I've always loved to uh, cook and I always was very interested in health and nutrition. Um, I had the opportunity to do an internship, a summer internship um, as a high school intern, um, with, which originally was called um, General Foods, but now it's called Kraft General Foods. Um, it was located in White Plains, New York, and I met a wonderful um, VP who was name is her name is Paula Sneed. Uh, she still is. Um, she finally retired after all these years, but she's still around. Um, but she got me really into nutrition. That was the first time I ever met corporate dietitians and also having the opportunity to see working in a food industry of how they um, produce their food and also how they um, make it more healthy. Um, I had a chance to work with the dietitians one-on-one -on -one. Uh, working in their test kitchens of new food products that they are were sending out to um, different um, clients. Um, also, I had a chance to do recipe writing and also answering letters to um, customers who purchased some Kraft General Foods products during that time period and answer those some um, questions. So it, it was a great honor to work with her. Um, she really exposed me a lot in the um, field um, and it really got me interested in the field. And she was so impressed that I was so interested in it that she was able to get the local paper to write an article about me. And I know I sent you information on that there. Um, and that's when I was 16 years old and just um, talking about me working um, and interest in the profession itself. Okay, cool. And then where, where did you end up going to school and what, what happened from there? Well, from there, um, I was able to go to um, a junior high, um, basically a junior college, Westchester Community College in Valhalla, New York. Um, I, I went there for two years. And then during that time period, um, I decided I want to go for my uh, bachelor's degree. Um, my parents didn't want me to go too far. So I went to Washington, D.C., <laughs> which is Howard University, which is a historically black college um, and university. And... Um, I went there for about uh, three years and then I graduated. And then once I graduated, um, I went into the profession itself. Okay. And so what type of jobs have you done throughout the years? What would you say? Oh, you're going to try to reveal my age. But <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> well, uh, I first started out like, like a lot of dietitians do, uh, working in the hospital. So I did clinical. And then I also did food service management at that time, too. And then that's when I decided, oh, I can't stand food service management. It's not for me. So I went into the clinical area more and more. And, um, and then I worked in different clinics. Um, and that's when I decided to move down to um, Atlanta, Georgia, 
where I am right now, basically, and uh, worked in um, one of the major um, hospitals, indigent, what they call indigent hospitals, Grady Hospital, which is very famous, which a lot of um, dietitians that have gone through, um, but it gives you a really um, background as different things that you can do in the field that you may never, ever encounter before, uh, like two feedings and TPNs, very few um, dietitians are able to do that and work in that field, um, and particularly in the hospital setting. Um, so I've, I've done that for like six years and I've worked at different um, clinics and um, different um, nursing homes. And it wasn't until I decided to really um, looking into telemedicine. I was the first group of people to be sent home to work, uh, which was over 15 years ago. Well, you know, uh, hold on. Let me tell you, you don't need to age yourself. So you okay, thank you. You don't, need to do it. you don't need to do that. Just go ahead and just talk about it. If they look up on LinkedIn, they might find it. But otherwise, well, yeah, they, it. yeah, if people know math, they would easily find out anyway. So. But but yeah, um, I worked in um, Anthem um, for a very long time. But it was the it would gave me a chance to really understand more about telemedicine um, and the different changes that were going into it. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I've been there ever since. And then I decided to get my master's degree, but I wanted to get it into something different. And that's when I got into integrative functional medicine. Um, I did come to talk with the human resources person that was there during that time period with Anthem to see if they would be interested in hiring somebody who was integrative functional medicine. Um, and they said, no, we're not in that area and we're not California. So we're, we're in Georgia. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so that's when they said, no, that's okay. You know, so that's when I decided to open my own private practice okay. and been there since. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for sharing. I, I appreciate that. I love hearing people's stories and it's pretty cool that your introduction was onto the food side of things or the food manufacturing and production side of things. I didn't. Um, that's the fascinating thing is you don't know, you don't know what everybody's stories is. So that's pretty cool to hear. Yeah. And yes, you mentioned New York. I, I lived there for nine years, so I know exactly the areas you're talking about. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're talking about Westchester Community College, yeah. Valhalla. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Well, <laughs> since you mentioned the integrative and functional um, medicine side of things, what do you feel is the, um, I guess, what what would you say are some of the benefits of looking into the integrative and functional um, side of things? You know, if you could give it a give us the Cliff Notes version, what would you say? <laughs> well, it's still a very new profession, but um, it kind of allows you to look at the person as a whole, not as individual parts. Um, you not only learn about them as a person, but you learn about their lifestyle. You learn about their uh, what they're eating, what, um, how um, their emotions are. It's just so much is encompassed uh, compared to regular uh, allopathic medicine, which is traditional, basically traditional medicine that we usually um, uh, learn in the profession itself. Um, I think it's also a great um, area where you can do anything um, and go into different areas um, in integrated functional nutrition. You can make your own path. But the thing is, is that you really have a really um, better communication with you and your patients. Um, you get to know them in a different level and you have that trust factor because they are entrusting you their health and their life and everything. And they reveal a lot to you during that time period too. So um, I think it's an excellent profession to go into. Um, for anyone who's really want to really dive into something that's different, um, something that's very new and something that is going to um, be more what we call personalized medicine, you know, dealing with the person, you know, make them um, look at them as an individual, not as a quote unquote, well, this person has diabetes. So we just treat them like every other diabetic. And as everybody knows that, you know, everybody is different. So I, I, I appreciate the profession and their way of thinking of towards medicine itself. Okay, cool. Well, mm -hmm. thank you for that. Appreciate mm -hmm. that. Oh, yeah. So with, uh, I know this is going to feel like a weird question every time I ask it to people, but <laughs> you know, if you could do it all over again in your career, mm -hmm. 
what would you change and or like what would you keep the same uh, you know mm-hmm. oh yeah um i would have changed was um i w- i wish i really dove into my private practice and the the creative things I've been doing within my practice, both of them, um, earlier. <laughs> um, and I wish I had a business coach earlier too, because that allowed me to really hone a lot of the skills of what I could do in my practice and what I can do um, in the in the profession itself. Um, I wish I did that in a lot earlier in my years. But during that time period, I wasn't sure what exactly what area I wanted to go into. And, you know, as you get older, you learn and then you dive and say, well, this is what I don't want to do. This is what I do want to do. So as you get older, you kind of like this, you become more wiser. (laughs) So um, the the things that I would like to keep and continue, um, the fact is, is that um, The fact that I got into the telemedicine profession area, um, that I would definitely was very happy that I really dived into that area. Um, It really kind of opened up my eyes and every day is something new. Um, (laughs) Changes in technology, as you can see what's going on in the world, is the same thing as going on in telemedicine itself and telehealth. So it's, it's always changing and moving and you have to keep up. And that's the thing, because if you backslide and fall back, it's hard, hard to keep up in that. So, yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes, very much so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with any so. technology, with anything. So, yeah, you always want to keep up with the changes, because otherwise, the world just passes you by. So. Yes, definitely. Okay. Well, cool. Well, thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Um, next question: What does the future hold for you? What would you say? Well, retirement soon. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> But but really, uh, more into um, my private practice. Um, another part of my private practice, I am looking at doing more consulting with um, clients that have skin issues and is showing the correlation of nutrition with skin care. Um, and then also I make my own skin products too. So I am fixing my website to be able to sell and do more of those also. Um, and then also doing more stuff in integrated functional medicine. I think that... Um, there is just so many stuff that's going on with research in it, um, and that's that has been proven um, different um, different things, like um, such as dealing with gut health and dealing with immuno um, immune health. Those type of things um, in integrated functional medicine is um, constantly changing, and the research is there, and the evidence is there. So, doing more stuff in that area, I think that that would be a, a great area for me to look at and continue in. So that's something I'm really looking at towards my future. And then also um, eventually doing a little bit more volunteer, but not as much. (laughs) Cutting down the volunteer a little bit, but still, you know, continuously helping others and particularly in this profession and particularly the youth. Um, I I would love to see more and more younger people getting into nutrition um, because it is very, very important. I think it's the most important Part of medicine anyway um and i think that more um, younger people and in, in trying to recruit them and get them in the profession itself i think it would be a great thing um to continue and doing and, and helping you know and again and being a part of that yeah no i mean that's that's the purpose of these videos that's the purpose of a lot mm-hmm. of us in volunteering is trying to look at the next the future and getting right. them to have the same vision or the same mindset and and joining us because we've all had a blast and we've all, you know, everyone has their ups and downs, trials and tribulations, but at the same time, uh, we want to recruit the next generation to yeah. keep it going forward, keep the legacy going. So yes, definitely. So, yeah. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> Thank you for that. So the final question for you is, do you have any words of wisdom for the next generation of um, up and coming dietitians? I would say, um, I know that a lot of times um, in our profession, we we sometimes look at the negative things, <laughs> but I would I would encourage the youth and and to my younger self is to continue on, um, continue on learning about the profession. Look at the positive side about it. Look at why did you go into it in the first place? You know, constantly 
when I feel like kind of upset about things that are going on, I look at it and say, okay, well, why did I go into this in the first place? It's the love, it's the passion. Um, it's the fact that, that this field is so broad that you can do what you want to do. And you can either be a niche or either that you can easily um, be something that's an anomaly <laughs> different that or either you could be a start of a new um, spinoff of this profession. So I think that that type of thing, um, knowing that this profession is ever changing um, and it's needed because everybody has to eat. <laughs> Um, I think that just younger people just remembering why they got into that profession in the first place and look at where they want to go and don't give up. Um, there were times, many a times that I, that I wanted to give up. Um, I know that a lot of people did not pass the RD exam the first time. I'm one of those. Uh, I, I've, I'm just going to reveal, uh, it's been like four times I had to take the exam before I could pass it. But I just, the thing was, is that I just did not give up. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew what I wanted to be in, in this profession. And for those who do fail the exam or those who feel like, well, I'm not good enough, don't think that. You know, you are good enough. You can do this and you can be in a profession that's ever growing and ever changing. Awesome. Hey, that's, mm -hmm. that's great words. Thank you so much. I appreciate, oh, no. <laughs> um, I appreciate your, your answers and, you know, taking your time and I want to wish you the best of luck with all your, all your things that you're doing. And I, you know, thank you for all your volunteering because that's how I met you. Yes. And it's always good for people to know it is a small world out there. And so your, your message of perseverance is great. So thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. And thank so, you for having me. <laughs> yes, absolutely. All right. So let me. I'm also on the platform Buy Me a Coffee. This is a platform that allows creators like myself to create content and get rewarded in there a variety of payments. I've decided to do it via coffee. So if you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can do so. And if you want to send one to the individual I'm interviewing, send it to me and I will send it their way. With that being said, thank you very much for being here with us today. I hope you really enjoyed the video and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.